darkness seems to consume whatever's behind the tree. I think we're only seeing what matters. It's the old Silent Hill for PlayStation 1. <laughs> yeah. The draw distance is extremely short. That adds to the creepy atmosphere. Yes, I've got an idea. Orem, why don't you take your sword and try to open the door with that? If, if we're stuck in a door, that's in Whitestone, awesome. you should really just try to like stick a sword in it and wow. jiggle it around. Yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Can you help somehow? Yeah, I'll help too. I'm, I'm, I'm use gonna go push find a window. Go find a window. So, All right, let's right, try. All right, Jim, 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 Stop. Sure, I'll hit it with my hand. You begin to move further and further, following the turn of the road, and the road itself zigzags rapidly, and you can see areas where it shifts. There's more cracks and. Uh, oh my god. Uh, what? You pud. What? Okay. Well, don't touch decord. it on anything. Gotcha. There, there it is. Oh, the cords. So fun is that I have these. Oh, don't! But you'll kill me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Because we're put here That's for all. a reason. <laughs> that is. I respect it. I respect it. Very check off. Um. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. And I'll go after you. She's close to me. Okay. Something he was not. Yeah. Dove under the moonlight. Now oh. you can own shit, and he sings the hits. So oh God, Motown. you try to scream <laughs> <laughs> on five CDs so. because it's forever. <laughs> DCs are just climbing. <laughs> <laughs> this city does not seem to like classic hits. <laughs> Presences, but they're not minds. They're not singular minds that you can necessarily connect with. It's odd. You, you feel they're there, but once you try and connect, that even that, that surface passing by, kind of gliding your fingers through their thoughts that you're used to doing in you know, crowded spaces, it's like it's empty or not fully material. You do hear the young boy's voice say, I've been noticing you following me lately, Matilda. Why is that? Matilda. You hear silence and then hear him. It's okay, just making the other boys tease me on it, you know? Matilda, do you want to want to play a game with me? Kind of a small pocket alleyway where like multiple of these thin spaces all collide into this kind of opening, maybe like 15 by 20 or so feet. And you see this young boy, kind of a shaggy mob of red hair that barely hides the top of his forehead, his eyes peek through with a little smile. Not pauper clothing, but nothing noble-like. Um, looks about 12 or 13, and you see standing across from him, flickering shadow, a feminine form like a young girl with a small purple glow in the chest. And the boy looks to it like it's listening. Oh, come on, it'll be so fun. All the proper city kids play it. So a farm girl like you would really like it, I think. <laughs> you hear a voice in your head, very young. I don't know if I should say yes. I like him, though. The boy goes, it's called Secret Treasures. And he kind of reaches into his pocket and pulls something out in his hand, looking towards the shadow. Don't trust him. Why? Oh, he's inviting me to play a game. That's nice, right? Lana, tell us how to find you. Come home. But I like him. See, I found something that I think is perfect for you, a treasure, and I want to give it to you, but first you need to tell me a secret. It's okay, you can tell me any steps in closer to the shadow. Lana, don't trust him. The shadow form, like black nether material that just kind of, as it flickers through, like a like an occasionally fast and occasionally slow whirlwind of darkness, where it meets its limit is the shape of a little girl, pulsing purple heart in the center of its chest. And in that moment, it seems to almost look to you, and it looks back at the boy, and then takes a step back. What's wrong? It's just a game. Come on, don't you want to? Don't you want your treasure? Looks back at you, steps back again from the boy. Well, come on, take it! And he goes and opens his hand and throws a fistful of dirt in her direction, and she ducks out of the way and then dissipates into the wall behind her. And the boy goes, "Little oh, shit." The kid turns around angrily, fists balled up, and then walks back into the alley across from where you are all standing. And as he walks away, all the color just fades off his body, and you see this kind of ghostly, material, ethereal form just vanish back into the city, unseen. What? I hate all of this. Can we, Ladna? Matilda? Are you there? Yeah. I want to find you and help. Can you show me the path? I'm just playing by myself. Where are you? I'm playing in the barn. Is that outside of town? Usually, but not today. Can you see the tree, honey? No, the tree scares me. What does the barn look like? Well, it's kind of red and it's tall. It's got big doors on it. I'm up at the top of it. There's a ladder you take and I made some dolls. Who are the dolls, honey? I made a nice woman. I made a bird that can take me away from here. 
We can be that bird for you. We can take you away. Where would we go? Home, somewhere safe. Is there a mean woman around here? Yeah. Do you know where she is? She won't let me leave. Have you seen her lately? She's, she's sort of out that way. She points off the opposite side of the open hayloft door. Just beyond me, you can see there's the edge of the shape of the massive tree. What's in the drawings? They're very, very rough child sketches, shapes. A lot of them depict what you can make out to be like a family of three, like a mom, a dad, and a little girl. One of them looks like, you can't tell if it's like a dragon or a, or a snake with wings, but it looks like something traveling over the sun. You see one that shows her, like a little girl like her, with just a, a very sad expression on her face. And you see one that's just black, dark scribbles on the page. Just this kind of voided hole. Matilda, can you tell me about this drawing? It's interesting. What were you thinking? You hear in your mind, that's what's beyond the city. That's what everything is now. Have you tried to leave? The tree won't let me. You're gonna come with us, Matilda. We're gonna go. Would you like that? The tree won't let me. Uh, the majority of the barn is currently now wrapped in ivy that's growing denser and darker. The leaves aren't green. They are dark gray to black. Grab her, but let's go. And I jump out. You go to jump, and now the ivy is hung down and enclosed the exit from this barn. Watch, it's more attentive. Begin to wrap. Do you have a secret way out of here? Oh no! Her I'm shadow disappeared. Did you run? You hear Laudna's voice respond, older. It sounds like her, maybe a little younger than you know her as. Oh, hello. Where are you? Who is this? It, it's Imogen, I'm a friend. Oh, I'm very busy right now, I'm getting dressed. Oh no. <gasps> Don't you do it, Don't fucking Are you going to a dinner? Yeah, are you going to? Who is this? Matilda? Yeah? Don't go. I must, I'm, I'm sorry, Matt. I yeah. can't change what happened back then. I can only handle right now. It's That's not. a distraction. We should go. If we can just keep her away from Delilah, maybe Delilah will get stronger the closer that, that Laudna is. I, I don't know how it works. Think less about the past and let's try and deal with the now. Stop trying to change what happened. Change what's happening right now. We are not time traveling. She is there. Matilda? You see the shadow form kind of accepting this, what looks to be like a, a nice shawl and like a, a blouse, a simple blouse and a dark skirt, kind of unfolding it a bit and holding it and looking at it. Can you hear me? Looks over in your direction. Oh, hello, it's, it, it's you. Something bad's gonna happen. We're gonna help you, okay? When it starts to get scary, you just come find us. We're gonna get you home, okay? You see the shape kind of look up at you and kind of like almost put a hand up to match yours across the glass. You see the mother kind of stand up, get a bit huffy. The voices kind of elevate a little bit and you could hear some of the conversation. You can now begin to make out what was just low mutterings through the glass. Now the woman's going, we have to be ready soon. They're not going to just wait for us. Come on, put it on, we have to go. This is the best dress I have. I gave you what I could wear, but you have to make us proud. The father figure kind of stands up and begins to finish putting on a tie that you see is fumbling with, and that's right, Laudna. He called her Laudna. Is that her mom's name? Oh. <laughs> Got a deal soon. What? This is gonna go bad soon. Oh. No. She's breaking. Let's keep her going. Oh, what, do we go? Do we go? Do we stay? I think all of these creatures are, we'll have to fight them if we break the vision. The mother is now behind the shadow figure of Ladna and helping put the blouse on, getting the skirt ready and goes, my beautiful Ladna, we're getting you ready for this. Tell Ladna they're not her parents. I need you to remember it's not real. This isn't real. I need you to remember who you are. Remember us. The, the dress is now on her. The figure kind of looks out towards you, looks at the parents, and then turns and heads back into the house and begins to vanish up to what looks to be a distant room. The two parents kind of look at each other, kind of dumbfounded and angry, and then both of them uh -oh. Oh, no. <laughs> look towards you with the glass, with this like, faint green sheen through the eyes. Delilah, we're coming for you. We need a promise, bitch. Ooh. Ah! They both like, reach out towards you, screeching at the glass. The glass shatters, and both of them go reaching out towards both of you. Chetney, is this wood or stone? That's true, Chetney would know. <laughs> it's wood. <laughs> it is wood. It's wood, okay. The tongue doesn't lie. 
Um, Everybody, body. get back! I reach out uh, behind my back and I pull out a stick of dynamite. What? <laughs> <laughs> and I hold, I hold the wood chisel yeah, yeah, to yeah. it. I'm like, yeah. get back! <laughs> 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 And it's just, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you oh. yeah. <laughs> So, see where you threw the dynamite, it impacted, and the ivy kind of wrapped around it to almost consume it, except for where the spark is. Shh. It didn't work. <laughs> It detonates this horrible blasting sound, just tears into the silence and the air around, and you can see the entryway is completely blown apart. And spectral purple energy gathers in this feminine form that you ascertain is to be a representation, if not the representation, of the entity that has been residing deep within Laudna, Delilah Briarwood. The outline of her face as it seems to blur at times and then come into focus once more. At other times you see gaps kind of swirl up and then it has to reform. There's a confidence as her shoulders pull back, but still a, an intangibility to the way her body tries to tether itself into the space. Well, interesting to see you all face to face finally. What now? She's not wearing anything. You just see this kind of image. There is. Yes. Totally they all did it. <laughs> <laughs> there is a feminine shape to the energy that forms her scenario, but she's not. That means titties. That means titties. She's not starting <laughs> OnlyFans. <laughs> all right. On OnlyFans. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> she's got options. I don't hate that for her. No. I'm, you know. Hey, you know, it's a better option than some other things. Okay. She's around. Would you mind if we just had a, a quick word to verify? Her intent? I don't think that's necessary in the circumstances, and she's a bit preoccupied. Preoccupied. Mm. I actually do think it's very necessary. Yeah, we might have to insist. I want to help you out, because I miss our friend. But you're going to have to work with us. And that means hearing from Ladna, even for a minute. Roll a deception check. <gasps> Natural 20. Ooh. 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 <laughs> There's a, a tension in the air, and the fog seems to swell strongly. And you begin to feel your muscles tense. And in that moment, the fog kind of blows away from the base of where Delilah's energy still holds and swirls. <laughs> if you think it will do any good, I've been speaking with her myself for some time, and. We've gotten along just fine. Laudna, darling. And she looks up, you hear the creaking of wood and branches pull apart ever so faintly, and now you can see that purple glow in this kind of flickering shadow form. Now, the same body, the same shape as what you saw put on that dress in that earlier vision, the purple glow in the chest, the same purple energy as Delilah. Tree itself almost seems to have like a faint purple glow to it as the branches pull back. She's still held partially within this cage, but is now visible. Lada. Marisha, you want to take my seat here for a second? <laughs> do this? That's illegal! That's illegal! Oh, no. You're crossing the street. Second. What is happening right now? Oh no. <laughs> what? What is what? this? What happens? This isn't a thing? You can't have two people over there. No, Wait, you're leaving. Oh, oh man. Oh, oh, oh man. <laughs> I don't know. I know. Oh, it's the fun part of it. <laughs> We're off the rails, girl. Welcome to my world. <laughs> so, suddenly, <laughs> you, in this dark space, reliving various elements of your trauma, lost in the expanse of cold, nothing, to whatever level of acceptance or struggle that you feel, your vision clarifies, and you it's almost like taking a breath, if breath was a thing that you dealt with. You glance beyond the cage-like branches of the tree as they open, and you hear Imogen's voice say your name. Lana? Imogen. We're gonna get you, we're gonna get you home, okay? I forgot how much I hate it here. Can you get out? Can you get out of the tree? 
I think that depends on you, darling. I need you to fight her. I haven't been able to fight her for 30 odd years. We're here now. We'll help. No, no, no. no. Branches begin to close. You can step away. Oh, from. no! Oh, <laughs> you were the DM who said Delilah turned into a fart! <laughs> <laughs> Too late! Too late! Too late. Too late. <laughs> As the branches close <laughs> once more in the tree, Delilah raises a finger. That's unsporting. Delilah Briarwood. We're gonna sunder you, and I'm gonna psychic glance her. Yeah, let's go! Fuck let's go. go! The trunk of the tree begins to glow a deep, menacing purple, almost black coloration. And as it does, you watch as these kind of light, sparkling little ribbons and tethers kind of ripple off of the off of the sun tree and wrap around Delilah and form this kind of almost ephemeral shield around her. Do we hear? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the nega sun tree. Just the sun tree. <laughs> <laughs> You can speak to plants, and sure be a great conversation. I guarantee you. Oh, <laughs> Been a while. Uh, With my bonus action, I'm gonna and I just tear off the lower half of my body, so Chetney's legs just go away, and just wolf legs underneath. <laughs> And I start Perfect. just Donald Duck waddling out with a, with a chitney shirt. Is that your wolf cock? Yeah, wolf cock. Perfect. And then I pull the chitney top off and tie the arms around my neck like a like a sweater. Oh god! <laughs> yeah. Never been more proud. They call it's the, the weirdest rocket. preppy ever. <laughs> I'm gonna address the the undead creatures and say, guys, you kill to live. You don't live to kill, right? That's my advice to them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold up. I'm gonna hold up the only holy thing that I have, which is this coin. And I'm gonna be. I'm gonna just say, "Be gone, you foul creatures!" And I'll. I'll turn undead. Imogen's eyes flicker red, and my arms are gonna flare up. And I'm gonna call Rudis. What does that mean? What? Yeah. Oh, okay. What? Call Ruidus? I'm gonna take friend. three. Okay, go ahead and roll for damage. To yourself. I don't know. It's got secret shit. It's a lot. Secret moon shit. Secret moon shit, Travis. Secret moon shit. I live with her, though. I ain't heard about this. That's kind of odd. She's craftier than Delilah is. Come on. I, I should, I should, I should, I should know. She didn't tell me anything. Okay. Child. Or you, Orem, you yep. take. 18 points of necrotic damage. Got it, got it. She's gonna go and attempt to tear you out of the branch. Damn it. Roll a strength saving throw to try and hold on to the branch you are on. This is not gonna succeed. Be positive. Be positive. Natural 20. Natural 20. Yeah! No Come fucking on! way! Come on! <laughs> yes! You gotta believe it! Fucking Lola! <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah? I feel real bad if I said that yeah? out loud and it didn't happen. Uh, 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 as the tether yanks, wow. the, the branches bend and bend, but then. Oh my god! Holds you in place. <laughs> what a fucking time to roll it! Oh god. Oh, that's high. That, that could have been, been real bad. Yeah, man. Against UFCG, that's going to be a 22. That hits. Okay. This is gonna be real bad. Um, so 16 points of necrotic damage. Can oh. I transfer suffering from sky. myself? No. Two. Okay. But what if I just. Oh no. <laughs> Are you at zero? Uh huh. <gasps> as FCG gets struck, you watch as the spiritual form that is like looking around, ready to go ahead and lend more aid, and then. Well, oh it's gone. Uh oh, oh god. Well, don't like that. That was a great prop. Did I get Han here? That was a great prop. Let's go hang out with Marisha. Down! Beep, 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 beep,
<laughs> She's gonna go ahead and use a necrotic burst towards you. Um, that's a natural 20. 42 points of necrotic damage. Oh, you watch man. her angrily oh. release the streak oh, oh, of Shadow Tendril, and in one instant, Orm's spiritual form just. Oh man! Oh god! Oh god, oh god, oh god! Oh shit. Fuck! <laughs> My eyes are gonna flare white, and I'm just gonna lightning bolt tree trunk because it sets anything on fire that it hits. I've seen lightning bolts split trees before, sure. so I'm hoping that's what this is gonna do. Sure. It does not get a dexterity save because it is a tree. Yeah. 33 point of lightning damage. How do you want to do that? No! Oh! <laughs> the tree wreathed in flames, top to bottom, the center trunk itself charred and beginning to catch Delilah, ready to just tear the life force out of each of your companions, already two scattered to the winds, you narrowly avoiding being the next target and shunting you from this realm to help him. I'm going to aim it right at the center of the trunk so I can split it straight down the middle and make the two halves crash down. The bolt impact, the wood splinters down the center, this corrupt, desolate sun tree. It's burned down the center as it peels back. Bits of wood go splintering, flying everywhere. There's a moment where you carve down before there is a blast of impact from the bolt hitting the heart of the tree. The trunk itself finishes dividing entirely. At that point, there is a flash of white. You see for a brief instant, Ladna now pulled free from the center of the tree. You hear Delilah screech, no! Into white. No! Delilah uh, dissipated? You wake up. You wake up. You wake up. You wake up. And FCG and Orem, who have already woken up on the floor of Pike Trickfoot's home in Whitestone. <gasps> and that's where we're going to. No, no. I have the worst headache! <sighs> so. Oh, God. Anyway, we'll pick up from there next time. Oh, my God. We'll see what transpires in the aftermath of this conflict. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, <laughs> thanks for joining oh us. God. Love you guys so much. And is it Thursday yet? Matthew Barso! Yeah.